This video is going to talk about how we can install optional Basilisk packages. This is found on your webpage under the install side uh, near the bottom, installing optional packages. So when you run the Python Conan file script, it'll install required code, uh, co not Conan, it'll install Conan stuff, but also Python packages like matplotlib, and there's pandas, and there's numpy, and a bunch of different dependencies. Here, you can see several other dependencies that could be used by Basilisk, um, but are not required with the core installation. So I wanna go through quickly why you might wanna run some of these. One of them is PyTest. This one is actually installed, but I'm highlighting it again because it's really important. If you're doing any testing on Basilisk scripts that you're developing, PyTest is very helpful. In fact, before you make any contributions back to the project, you should run PyTest to make sure you haven't broken anything else in Basilisk. And um, from the source directory, when you run PyTest, it will go ahead and execute all of them and make sure they're all running fine. And um, anyway, so that's pretty straightforward, PyTest. These other options are kind of interesting. When you're on PyTest, you can actually generate an HTML report. This is kind of handy when you want to have some documentation of what tests were performed per module and what were the outputs. And um, so you can install the PyTest hyphen HTML package. And when you run PyTest, if you, if you type hyphen hyphen, so there's two hyphens here, and then you give it a path like report slash report.html, it will generate an HTML output of all the modules tested, did they pass or not, and any documentation it can pull from the scripts, including figures that might illustrate, yep, look, energy was constant or it changed as expected, it'll actually be put in there. So this is a pretty handy thing, especially when you have to kind of, like on missions, sometimes we have to do code validation. And so what tests were run, this auto generates a report of what tests are run when we run PyTest. Now, for speed, this is pretty handy. You can run PyTest in a multi-threaded manner, because if you just run PyTest like we're doing up here, it's gonna run them and uh, one at a time, and it shows you, okay, this test may have different parameterized versions of it. It's gonna do a bunch of dots in one line, and it goes to the next test, and do one, two dots, and the next test, and all sequential. If you wanna take advantage of multi-threaded processors, where you can run multiple instances at the same time, then you have to install the PyTest hyphen xdist, x distribution. Because once you do that, then you can actually run PyTest with hyphen n and the number of processors here. It's a little bit hard to see, but, or depending on how you've installed an individual environment, I wouldn't have to run Python 3 hyphen m because PyTest would be the PyTest installed in a virtual environment. I could just run PyTest space hyphen n space eight, and that would run eight threads. So if you're an eight core machine, you can run eight. If you have hyper-threading, you could run 16. Um, just depends on your machine. So how many cores do you want to run? And it'll accelerate it. A little bit more overhead at the startup, but then once it gets going, it can run it in much shorter amounts of time. Lastly, creating documentation. So the documentation that you see here is actually hosted on the website. I'm just going to bring up quickly my website. If you go to hanspetershout.info, if you just click here, the current version, and if we do major releases, older versions, you will see different ones that we can push. Um, currently, we're on 2.1 branch, so 2.12 here. That's what's on the website. You can always see it, but you might want to also, if you're testing module or your own documentation, you might want to build your own documentation. If you pull in the latest develop, well, that documentation is not auto pushed to my website. I only do that when I do tagged major releases. So there's a page that you can read about the process of making documentation. And uh, basically you have to install certain things. We'll talk through, I'm gonna get it started here. It's inside the docs folder. So if I go to uh, my terminal window, uh, there we go. So inside Basilisk, you cd into the docs folder, and then you basically type H make HTML across Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. This should work. And it's going to run syncs and all these packages that are required, and it will start building the documentation. I'm going to just let this run in the background. Um, there are other commands besides make HTML that you can run. 
such as make clean, which will just give you a clean build and remove any legacy stuff. And make view will open up the resulting default web page for the documentation in your web browser. But the make clean and make view certainly work on Mac OS. I think they work on Linux. I'm quite sure they don't work on Windows. I wasn't able to get those scripts to work on a Windows way as well. Things just behave differently than on a Unix system. But so uh, everywhere you can do make HTML on Unix systems, I think you could do make clean and make view. But let's go back to the packages that was required to, to run the documentation, which is still, as you can see, running in the background. This will take several minutes. We need several Python packages, and these are listed here, the Sphinx. We need the Sphinx theme, specifically version 0.5.1. If you don't do this version, the later themes that are there break all the custom Basilisk uh, cascading style sheet usage that we have, and the web page won't look properly at all. But otherwise, you can install the latest Breathe, Read Common Mark, and DocUtils packages. Those should all run. We've been testing them lately again and make sure that everything we're doing is kind of compatible with these latest packages. So this should build with even Python 3.10. That was an issue we were running into earlier this spring. Um, so this will install all the packages. Once you've installed all the packages, then you'd be good to go, um, at least from a Python perspective. There is still, the, we use Doxygen. Doxygen is a program that helps go through the C code and pull out definitions for variables, classes, methods, and it puts it into the HTML documentation, which is very handy, um, but you have to install that separately. So you can go to the Doxygen page and download it for different platforms. On Mac OS, I know this works with Brew, Homebrew. We've been used Homebrew for installing CMakes and uh, Squig earlier, so you should already have it if you're running Basilisk on Mac OS. You can just do Brew install Doxygen. For Linux and other platforms, go to the Doxygen website and see how to install it. But that's a tool you have to manually install on your system and make sure, like on Windows, that whenever you install it, that that's visible in the path from the terminal, um, that you have to do that. So that should go ahead and build your system. Now, some comments on making the build. If you just download the source, you have to actually build Basilisk before you can build documentation. So that's why I host the documentation also on my website. If you don't do that, part of running the build, it tries to execute or it pulls in these Python scripts and these, and these are not runnable scripts, a lot of errors will come up. So make sure you build Basilisk. Next, you should actually run PyTest from the source folder first, because running PyTest actually runs through all these scenario scripts and unit tests. And if there's any images that need to be saved off, that's all done dynamically. They will get saved off when you run PyTest. So to get the full documentation, you need to build it, build Basilisk, then you need to go to inside source, run the full PyTest on everything, and that will auto save off all the images. And now, I can CD into the docs folder, which we had he here, oh, and it's finished. Uh, you can see, it takes it a while, it goes through everything. And then I had no warnings, no nothing, which is nice. And my documentation is finished. So here I should be able to do make view and you can see it brings up that one. If you wanna find it yourself, I'm gonna bring over a window. So inside the docs, if you go look at the build folder, there's an HTML subfolder and somewhere in there, there should be index. There we go. That's the main one. That's basically, that was, that's what was open. So if you want to open it manually, that's handy. Um, let's see, building a documentation can take quite a bit of time. If you're just trying to test build documentation for a particular module, I'm gonna show you a quick trick on what you can do there. Uh, let me reduce the window size so it fits in my recording. So if you're looking inside docs, go inside source, there is a folder and you know, you're in this folder and there's a conf configuration.py, conf.py. I'm gonna open that one up. On this conf.py file, you just scroll to the very bottom. You will see here, you're actually specifying what to include when you build documentation. And so this is what's 
in the system, it will include the entire official source, anything inside the source directory. So it goes through all the tests, all the, all the flight software, all the simulation, all the architecture, all the utility folders, all of that stuff gets all gets included. There's a few ex folders external to source, uh, the example folders and example tools, it rips through those and uh, brings them in. And this is what takes some time. So if you just want to build it for a particular set of modules, the trick is you can go here and comment out that line. So now you don't include the full source. And let's see, I just want to include documentation from flight software algorithms. I'm going to uncomment that line. If it's a particular module within it, you can do slash whatever and you know just look at this attitude guidance folder and just build that documentation. Now, when you run this, this will run much, much, much quicker, and you can quickly check out the documentation for your particular module. So that's kind of a handy trick on building documentation. When you're done, don't push this code, just you know, undo it and um, leave it in its original state, because we want to, by default, always build the entire source. So here you can control what all is built. Now, how do you open that? Because if you didn't build the entire project, your navigation tree is not going to be functional. And of course, any links to elements of Basilisk that you didn't build documentation for will not work. So just be aware of that, including links to messages. You haven't built the architecture's folder, so there's no message definitions. So none of the message links are going to work. But that's usually okay when you're just getting the basic documentation to work. At some point, you should build the entire thing. Just be a little patient and then make sure all the external links to other modules are actually functioning. How do you open it up? So if you don't have the navigation tree working, um, I'm gonna put this back and let's see. So here, when you've built it, you can go inside and let's say under documentation, you will find something that mimics very much Basilisk. And if we just built flight software algorithms, I could click here and open the index and that would give you access now to that part of the page. If you only built the attitude guidance side, you can open up that one. If you if you only built the documentation for Hillpoint because you wanted it really fast, then you would only have access to Hillpointing modules and none of the other documentation would be created. But you can just navigate inside the HTML folder. Just go inside documentation, and then it mimics your Basilisk directory. And you could open up the index or the hill point file. Um, if I do that one, you would see, yep. Now here all the links work because I built the entire documentation. But anyway, so some tips and tricks on optional packages. I do highly recommend, you know, um, at least if you're doing testing, install xdist. That's that's very good. And if you're also doing your own code, you should also write documentation for it. So therefore, I do recommend installing these required Sphinx and uh, Breathe and other Python utilities, uh, including Doxygen, so you can build the documentation yourself. 